since I was a teenager, I was extremely intrigued about the human brain, and uh, especially about this intellectual and almost philosophical question of how uh, cognition emerges from the working of uh, neuronal circuits. Uh, it's this so-called bridging problem, going from a brain which is made as a bunch of molecules to higher level cognition. We seem to be the only species uh, that develops a sense of exact number. Uh, we can think about number 37 and think it's a prime number, it's very different from 38, uh, but uh, animal species can never do that. This symbolic ability of the human species must have specific uh, biological roots and we're trying to uh, understand what these are and also trying to understand what is the effect of education on the human brain. Recently, I've been collaborating with um, colleagues in uh, linguistics and in anthropology, and we've been able to do psychological experiments uh, with Amazonian Indians, um, probing what are the limits, and what, but also what is the competence of their numerical uh, cognition in people who have very little access to education and whose language for speaking about number is uh, limited. In, in, they have a rather short lexicon which stops around five. Um, so uh, we've been able to show both what is universal about number. We definitely know now that there is a universal sense of number which, which is shared by infants, animal, and continues into adulthood. But also we begin to understand more and more what is being changed in the human brain, and, and these changes are induced by culture and education. The whole stream of research um, should ultimately uh, contribute to uh, the education domain. Um, we think that by understanding better the organization of the brain, uh, and especially how the brain architecture changes in the course of development and education, we can perhaps help uh, normal children acquire arithmetic. And we've begun to develop software to facilitate the acquisition of number sense, and especially number symbols in young children. But there is also a very interesting condition called developmental dyscalculia, which is very much like dyslexia in the domain of numbers. And uh, children with dyscalculia uh, can have a very selective deficit in understanding what arithmetic is about. Uh, we begin to understand what brain systems are being involved. It's just the beginning of this research, but we hope that um, education, especially with the help of computerized software, can help them overcome this deficit or at least compensate for this deficit. And so this is an area of research that we also pursue in the lab. Uh, so, so we're very lucky to be in a moment in science where we have new tools to study a brain organization. And in this building in particular, uh, we are very lucky to have a completely new building which is entirely dedicated to brain imaging of various forms, from electrical imaging of brain waves, magnetic fields of the brain, and also uh, the functional and anatomical organization of the brain as can be seen with magnetic resonance. And we have some of the highest power uh, magnetic resonance tool. Um, so it's fantastic to be doing science in this period and I, I am as excited as ever about our field because it's almost like being doing uh, physics in uh, you know, the best years of the early 20, uh, 20th century. It looks like the whole field is opening and as a result I, I have become very excited in many other fields of cognitive science. Uh, we are studying uh, reading as a, another operation in which education changes profoundly the organization of the brain. Uh, I, I have also become very interested in the issue of consciousness uh, because we have been able to show that many arithmetic operations can operate without consciousness, with purely subliminal stimuli. So you, we flash a digit, you don't even see it, but we can show that many operations have started to unfold in your brain and we can study the order and depths of these operations. So this raises the whole issue of, you know, what is consciousness? What is it good for, given that there are so many operations that can start without uh, consciousness? So we feel that we are really on the brink of solving some of these big mysteries of, of the human mind and its origins. It's very exciting.